Group D streptococci or Group D streptococcus can also be referred as enterococcal group of organism or enterococcus. In this lecture, we are going to concentrate mainly on two pathogenic enterococcus organisms that is enterococcus fecalis and streptococcus bovis. Enterococcus fecalis, the name is derived mainly because of feces. These organisms are seen in human feces. They are endogenous in nature, that's why it is called as Enterococcus fecalis. Whereas Streptococcus bovis, the second organism, it is non-enterococci. It is referred as non-enterococci because it is transmitted to humans from bovine animals. It is bovine in nature. That's why Streptococcus bovis is non-enterococcus whereas the enterococcus fecalis is an enterococcus organism so combined together these two organisms are combined together can be referred as group d streptococcus organisms they are always seen inside the ga tract their normal flora of ga tract their gram positive cocci in pairs or in chains so these organisms resembles like streptococcus pneumoniae so in gram stain smears it resembles like strep pneumoniae that catalase negative, they have a lance field group D specific carbohydrate molecule on its surface and it is associated most of the times with tychic acid and these are fecal tattoo anaerobes, hemolysis on blood agar varies, so few organisms shows alpha hemolysis and majority of the organisms shows gamma hemolysis on blood agar culture media and they resist to salinity, halo tolerant and they are bile resistant. Epidemiology. These organisms are seen endogenously in human large intestines as well as in animals. Humans get this infection from food transmission and we can also get humans get this infection from hospital environments. These organisms always seen in hospitalized environment. Most of these organisms in hospitalized environment are antibiotic resistant. So people always have a chance of getting this nosocomial infections. And more, most predisposing factors which can lead to cause this nosocomial infections are urinary or intravascular catheterizations and surgical procedures in the hospitals and intensive care unit patients are more susceptible to get this nosocomial infections of enterococcal group of organisms. Pathogenesis. These organisms always carry R plasmid, resistant plasmids, antibiotic resistant plasmids. So that's why these organisms are resistant to antibiotics. And there is no specific particular virulent factors in causing the infection. These organisms can colonize and secrete some few factors that can lead to cause the infection. Those are fibrinolytic enzymes which can break the fibrin which can help this organism in penetrating into the tissues and these organisms have a carbohydrate molecules on its surface we'll call it as carbohydrate factors helps in addition to addition of this organism to the host cells and these organisms can colonize majorly with the help of uh, one secretory factor that is bacteriocins these bacteriocins uh, inhibit the neighboring bacterial growth so that these organisms can comfortably grow in the GI flora by resisting the growth of, by inhibiting the growth of other bacteria nearby. These organisms after colonization, if there is any break in the epithelium of the intestines or in the GI tract or urinary tract, can lead this organism to enter into the bloodstream, leads to bacteremia and ultimately it can lead to cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. Majority of the hospitalized nosocomial infections where there is a catheterization, urinary or IV catheters can lead to cause this infection or surgical procedures can lead to cause the subacute bacterial endocarditis. And most predisposing factors for this subacute bacterial endocarditis is in patients uh, who are already having some cardiac uh, problems like rheumatic fever or valvular disease are more prone to get this subacute bacterial endocarditis. These organisms, whenever a fecal contamination contaminates the urinary tract, there's a high chances of contaminating of urinary tract by feces. So in those situations, we can also see urinary tract infections, UTIs. Clinical conditions. 
it may it can normally cause us urinary tract infections and GI tract diseases like dysentery and abdominal lapses because these organisms are endogenous in nature if there is a minor breach in the epithelium of these regions can lead to cause UTIs and GI tract dysentery GI tract conditions like dysentery and abscesses whereas nosocomial infections always in patients who are present in the hospitals where there is a surgical procedure occurred on the patients or catheters, IV or urinary catheters are the main predisposing factors for getting this nosocomial infections, hospitalized infection. In those patients always leads to see one condition called subacute bacterial endocarditis. So in this subacute bacterial endocarditis, we can see in a slow pace. The, the infection or endocarditis, uh, you can't see very severe symptoms in the beginning. Always it starts with a low pace, with a low grade fever, anemia, you can see splinter hemorrhages, you can see um, skin nodules, Genova lesions, or you can see osseous node, you can see <coughs> uh, in some severe cases, we can also see uh, meningitis cases or encephalitis because of uh, subacute bacterial endocarditis. Whereas there is one more organism, important one, that is Streptococcus bovis. Streptococcus bovis always also associates with colon cancer. There is no particular reason or there is no particular evidence that Streptococcus bovis is a carcinogen. But always in colon cancers, we can see that Streptococcus bovis is always seen or can be extracted from the colon cancers. And these Streptococcus bovis organism can also cause all these infections like urinary tract infection, GI diseases or nosocomial infections and very rarely we can see meningitis because of these organisms whenever they enters into the tissues because of subacute bacterial endocarditis they embolize whenever they struck or whenever they block the capillaries of the brain tissues can lead to cause necrosis and meningitis condition or encephalitis so clinical conditions so these organisms can always seen endogenously or we can get these organisms through food transmission or IV catheters or any surgical procedure can lead this organism to enter into our human tissues or into the bloodstream. So entry is by endogenous, foodborne and catheters even because of surgeries. So we can get GI tract problems. So GI tract problems, GI tract infections dysentery and abdominal abscess we can see the dysentery condition with uh, diarrhea with blood and pus we can also see abdominal abscess we can see urinary tract infections in urinary tract infections most of the time it is because of this organism fr um, from the GI tract whenever it is transmitted to urinary tract we can see UTIs so in this condition we can see dysuria pain during micturation, increased frequency of urine, we can see lower abdominal pain, it can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis or infective endocarditis in the slow pace, we can see anemia because a lot of red blood cells will be destructed while passing through the small capillaries and destructed epithelial region endothelium rot spots because of emboli blockage in the minor capillaries in the eye regions we can see rot spot that means hemorrhages inside the eye, eye region conjunctival areas splinter hemorrhages we can see under the nails because of emboli because of damage of valves inside the heart especially the aortic valves uh, can lead to cause murmurs in the murmurs in the heart region emboli always these organisms which are grown on this uh, endocardium of the human body, human heart can always have a chance of detachment from that area and these emboli, a group of organisms which is formed as emboli can block uh, the minor capillaries and can lead to cause necrosis, meningitis or any kind of lesions in the human body. We can see osseous node, osseous node you can see the lesions on the skin. We can see Genova lesions, which are nothing but the lesions which are present on the palms and soles. Meningitis. Very rarely we can see meningitis. The left one, this is splinter hemorrhages under the nails. 
because of embolites of these organisms can block the capillaries which can increase the pressure and rupture the capillaries can lead to cause a splinter hemorrhages these are road spots inside the eye you can see the capillaries are blocked and ruptured and you can see the blood oozing into the tissues can lead to cause road spots and this is the necrosis caused by the emboli which can lead to cause osseous node so diagnosis <coughs> so the major in gram stains it will always resembles like strep pneumonia so that's why by gram staining we can't identify this organism we can't confirm the diagnosis of the organism or identifying the organism so we can confirm with the help of growth of this organism these organism grows as white color colonies and blood agar culture medium whereas this enterococcus fecalis it grows on blood agar in blood agar in presence of 40% bile and 6.5% 6.5% sodium chloride these organism can grow because these organisms are resistant to bile and they are resistant to alkalinity that is 6.5 salinity even whereas streptococcus bovis also grows on blood agar and produces the white color colonies but in presence of bile juices it can grow but in presence of 6.5% sodium chloride the streptococcus bovis organism won't grow on blood agar whereas there is one more identification test that is uh, be by using bea media a bile escalin agar medium these organism enterococcus group of organism have a capacity to hydrolyze escalin to escalatin so whenever these organisms are inoculated on bea media bile escalin agar medium these organisms hydrolyzes the escalin on the agar in the agar to escalatin so ultimately we can key, we can see black color discoloration of colonies so in this picture you can see the growth of the organisms and you can see because of this growth you can see the organisms are hydrolyzing this escalin to escalatin so because of that you can see black color discoloration on this agar medium and to compare or to differentiate by strep pneumonia these organisms are resistant to optogen optogen test is widely used for strep to differentiate between strep pneumonia and streptococcus viridens but we can also use this to differentiate between streptococcus pneumonia and enterococcal group of organisms these organisms can grow in presence of optogen on culture medium whereas streptococcus pneumonia organism won't grow in optogen containing medias so these organ enterococcal group of organisms are resistant to optogen and the enterococcus group of organisms are also pyr positive pyral idyl aryl amidase positive and these organisms are positive and streptococcus pyogenes are also positive for pyr <coughs> treatment these organisms always carries or plasmid resistant plasmid that's why these organisms are resistant to antibiotics very few organisms we can treat with ampicillin enterococcus group can be treated with ampicillin very few organism but majority of them are resistant to antibiotics because they carries or plasmids so the drug of choice for enterococcal group of organisms is vancomycin vancomycin is the group of vancomycin is the drug of choice for enterococcal group of organisms so nowadays we are observing one more few one more variety of enterococcus that is vancomycin resistant enterococcus during this these organisms are getting resistant to vancomycin even so nowadays very few organisms are growing as vancomycin resistant organism enterococcus group so in for those organism nowadays we are using the drug called prestinomycin so for organisms which are resistant to vancomycin the enterococcus group we can use prestinomycin but ampicillin is no more use very few organisms can be treated with ampicillin but uh, more majority of the organism are resistant to penicillin drugs